leave no die left behind. Because seriously, I could not bring myself to throw away die that is left over from other projects. So hi, I'm Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are going to dye some 100% wool, wool of the Andes worsted weight yarn, and dye that has been left over from a variety of different projects. Here we have some Wilton's Black that has some vinegar in it that's left over from when we were dip dyeing silk scarves in food coloring. I also have two containers of reddish and purplish dye left over from when we were snow dyeing soft blanks. So I think that to start off, we are going to end up dip dyeing our yarn into the black and then maybe into these colors and depending on where we are with the final color, we might decide to pull some other leftover dye from some other projects to add on to this yarn. Consider this the smorgasbord of yarn. I pre-soaked the yarn in tap water for 15 or 20 minutes. I'm not entirely sure. And now that our leftover black dye is at a boil, and I mean look at how opaque that is. Um, I am going to reduce the heat and we are going to dip dye our worsted weight yarn in our black. And huh, there's a bit more in here than I thought and I'm curious what the color will end up looking like. Wow, so I did not measure the dye when I was starting off with our silk scarf project. I literally just this is actually really, really kind of nice. I did not pre-measure the dye. Um, I just took like a bit of a, f well, look, there we go with our blue. I took, you know, a, I guess a forkful of dye from the Wilton's container and put it in the pot, but we still have enough dye left to get a really, really pretty breaking. I found that silk absorbs dye way slower than wool. And honestly, I was not expecting to have this much color on the yarn. So I'm a little pleasantly surprised. And now wondering if I'm even gonna want to do anything with this with these reds. I might need to go get some other yarn to play with this leftover dye. But I'm gonna go ahead and let this sit in the pot for about 10 minutes and then we'll come back. My timer failed me so I'm not sure exactly how long it has been, but the water is clear. Let's see down there. And so if I put this sort of gently in a bowl, you can, you can see we've got this really dusty gradient from a mauvey purple to sort of a grayish blue at the other end. Now, if we were to pump up the amount of food coloring, these colors would become a lot more intense, but I think that they are actually rather lovely on their own. The other thing that I wanted to point out is that we see a lot more blue than we frequently see when we are dip dyeing into Wilton's Black. And this was the Wilton's Black that had red number 40 in it, not the red number three Wilton's Black. Um, but since we had dyed this in the silk first, we and the reds still bind a little faster to the silk, even though I didn't get breaking on the black silk scarf, we, you know, we had less reds here and also less blues, but we see a lot more of the breaking. And so this is really pretty. All right, since that came out with a lot more color than I expected, and I just love the color as is, I'm actually going to dump this water and I think we are gonna heat up some of these leftover snow dyeing dyes and then dip dye um, a second skein, 100 gram skein of wool in the Andes into one color and then the other. All right, I'm gonna start with this more purpley color mainly because I think that this container has a leak in it. All right, so this had Oh yeah, it does have a little crack in the bottom. So this is left over from when we are doing the snow dyeing of our sock blanks. And this color was predominantly blue, 
but then there was so much of the red runoff that I added some of that to it. So we, I'm not sure quite how intense that color will be, but we will dip dye our yarn into here, and then um, maybe not the whole thing, and then we'll dip dye into the other color in a little bit. So apparently I thought I was filming and I forgot to turn the camera on. But in about 30 seconds we dip dyed um, part of our skein into the more purplish of the reds. Um, it didn't break or anything, but I think that that's probably because there was way more red than blue anyway. But now I'm going to add the rest of the reddish Kool-Aid solution and we will let this heat up before we dip dye the other end. <laughs> but you can see that this is a nice, you know, this is m way more of like a, a purplish tone, but I think that whoop, any blues we had, they're playing trains upstairs. <laughs> I think that any blues that we had were kind of overpowered. But hopefully as we wait for this to heat up, the other end will cool off so that way I can comfortably pick that up to dip dye the other end. So I could just dip dye the other end of the yarn, you know, and that would be something that I've done before and would be pretty normal. Or I can rotate the skein like this and dip dye. So it's not even quite rotated 90 degrees because I've still got, I didn't quite dip half of it. So I've got some, this light pink at the top and maybe we'll have some white at the end, but let's see how different this red is from what we started with. And you can see that's a lot redder than this pink that I have from the other side. Do, do, do. Hopefully we've got enough color that I can keep dipping for a while. <laughs> and yes, I just double checked. I am filming this time. Of course my slotted spoon is down out of reach. You can see most of the color has cleared and I'm now, aha, when I drop it, I can put the rest in to get a little bit of color. So I know most of the color has exhausted. I'm going ahead and turning off the, the heat, but we can just let this sit in there for a couple of minutes or so. But one of the things, I mean, this is sort of a, you know, fly by the seat of my pants, use up the leftover dye I have in the kitchen sort of day. But one of the things that this shows is you might have some colors that don't seem that exciting, but by playing around with it and sort of making things up as you go along, you can get things that look really, really cool. So I'm just going to leave this to sit in the pot for a couple minutes and then I'll come back and take it out. The water is clear, as you can see, I just kind of pull this to the side. So I am going to remove the yarn. Sometimes I like to let it drip into the pot for a bit because that helps, moving the hot water helps it cool off a bit faster. But we've got this yarn that has all of these kind of pinks in it. It almost feels very vintage in terms of the colors. Um, so we've got, you know, these different varying gradients of pinks and a teeny, teeny bit of a very, very pastel pink in that yarn that went in at the end. So I am going to let both of these yarns cool and then we will wash them. So I've just got some cool tap water here and I'm going to add some liquid dish soap to the water to wash our yarns. But first we've got our leftover black yarn, which, you know, the base is way more purple. A lot of times with black, we get this sort of pink that's maybe closer to the dusty pink we see in our Kool-Aid scheme with leftover dye. But both of these yarns are really, really pretty. You know, the, the dyes that they came from, one was Wilton, one was Kool-Aid, so one was with vinegar, one was citric acid, one had a lot of vinegar, one had a lot of snow melt in it. <laughs> 
the water itself is clear. So I'm gonna go ahead and rinse these a few times and then hang them up to dry to talk more about these finished yarns. Here are the finished dry yarns that we created by dip dyeing 100% wool into some dye that was left over from previous dyeing experiments. With this skein, we dip dyed the yarn into some Wilton's Black that we had already used for dip dyeing a silk scarf, on a 100% silk scarf. And there was a, a lot of dye left over, but because we had already dyed some protein fiber in it, we have this gradient of color that is like we started in the middle of where we would normally see a broken black gradient. And I think that this dusty purple through sort of a slate pale blue is really beautiful. The second skein we dip dyed into two different Kool-Aid mixes. One was brighter pink and brighter pink, orangeyish red, and the other one had a little bit more purple. So by dip dyeing into one color and then rotating the skein and dip dyeing into the other, we have this gradient of pinks with a dusty rose, a very, very pale pink, and then it gets less, it's a warmer pink that intensifies as we get to the end. This kind of gradient isn't something, you know, isn't something that we would see like here with the Wilton's Black because we have more colors that shift around sort of a wider range. But I think that it is absolutely lovely and um, something about this pink yarn feels sort of vintage almost. Um, it's not quite a pastel. Both of these are sort of a medium tone, but I think that, you know, these together actually might make a really lovely project. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and hopefully this video will help you see why it is worthwhile to hold on to a dye that's left over from a project. If you have other bare yarn on hand, or even yarn that you might want to over dye, um, this leftover remaining dye can create some really beautiful colors. Obviously, you're not required to save leftover dye and run off from snow dyeing or from dip dyeing, but if you choose to save it, you can think of it as something fresh and new versus as some waste. And I know that personally, I don't like to leave any dye unused and I like to try to use everything that's left over because we get some stunning colorways like in what we showed today. Don't forget to subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel so you can be notified when I release a new video or start a live stream. Thanks so much for watching!